Hey folks, uh, this calculus lesson is part two, area under a curve by sigma. So let's go ahead and begin. It's a fun lesson, you guys. Uh, today's task is to find areas uh, 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 bounded by the region using sigma notation. So consider a region that's bounded by, and I, I abbreviate bounded by, BDB, uh, bounded by a graph of non-negative continuous function, uh, y equals f of x. So just think of a function, you know, above the x-axis. Uh, and it's uh, it's bounded by the x-axis. It's bounded by x equal a and x equal b. So here's a picture right here. All right. So this would be my f of x right here. Okay. This curve right here. Here's my x-axis right here, and here's my x equal a and x equal b. We're gonna, we're looking at the area of that region shaded inside of here. Okay. And we're talking about uh, above the x-axis. Later on, we'll start uh, we'll start moving that all around. I don't want to do that yet. Uh, we got to get you good good with this area first. So what we're going to do is divide uh, the interval, the closed interval, into n sections of equal width. So I'm going to you know, slice this up into n sections right here of equal width. And the total length of AB is just B minus A. This length right here is, uh, is this coordinate minus this coordinate. So the width of each uh, section, you guys, since I'm dividing them up into N sections, is going to be B minus A over N. So just think of these like if I can do little rectangles and draw straight lines up here. Okay, and the width of each of those rectangles would be B minus A over N. You guys with me? Okay, so we're going to call that delta X. That's what this is, delta X right here, okay? So uh, the general area of a rectangle, I'm here at the red right here, uh, is uh, uh, height times uh, uh, weight. I'm sorry, that should be width right there, not weight, sorry. This is width. What was I thinking? I must have been eating a cookie or something and, and was thinking about my weight. <laughs> Uh, I D T H. I'm just kidding, you guys. So height. Uh, so the uh, the width is my delta x right here. So it's going to be uh, height times delta x, and your height is your f of c. Okay, and c is just represents any point on there. You can just think of it as being f of x. Okay, so it's your f of uh, it's your f function times your delta x. Okay, that would be the general area of each little rectangle right there. Okay, so. The total area would be the area of all the rectangles, okay? And so that's what this summation means from i equal 1 to n of f of c sub i times delta x, where i is the number of widths, the number of rectangles in there. All right, so so observe the error factor. Okay, so here I am right here, you guys. Can If, if I'm talking about this area right here, Okay, here's my f of x right here, and it's bounded by x equal a, x equal b. Sorry, it's hard to see. That's x equal a, x equal b right there. If that's the area I did, and if I did rectangles that were underneath all the underneath rectangles, can I convince you that the area of the rectangles would be less than the area that's in between here? And if I did all the rectangles that were a little bit over, this, uh, these rectangles would add up to an area that's a little bit greater than this right here. Well, what we're going to do is, uh, so the lower sum would be equal, uh, less than the actual sum underneath here, which would be less than the, the upper sum. So this is my upper sum, this is my lower sum, and this is my actual sum. What we're going to do is we're going to do uh, infinitely many rectangles. The more rectangles, then the less the error factor. Can you see the error factor on this one here, you guys? is um, uh, It's less than. And over here, my error factor is greater than the actual area right here. So if we uh, get enough rectangles in here, then my it, what happens is, is my lower limit infinitely gets close to my upper limit right here. So that's what that says right there. All right, so definition of area of a region in a plane for f continuous of non-negative uh, on AB. If f is continuous and non-negative on the closed interval AB, the area of the region that's bounded by f of x, the x-axis, x equal a and x equal b, is um, uh, the area of the limit as n approaches infinity of i equal 1 to n of f of i times uh, delta x. And so what this is, you guys, is it's making uh, the, the infinitely many rectangles is what this is doing. And we're going to use our formulas from the prior lesson um, uh, combined with this lesson here. Okay, so this is my height. This is my width. N is the number of rectangles. And don't forget that uh, delta x is b minus a over n. Okay, and um, c sub i is delta x uh, uh, times i plus your starting point. And I is the number of widths right there. Okay, so let's try some of these, you guys. So 
The procedure for using the definition is to determine uh, delta x and c sub i. Okay, so c sub i, let's go back right here. c sub i is delta x uh, times i. Uh, and then plus your starting point. So a lot of times your starting point is zero. Okay, so uh, determine uh, delta x and c sub i. Substitute it into the definition. That definition right here, uh, right there. Okay, that's my definition. So we're going to substitute it into that. And then uh, substitute uh, all of that into your function or your equation. And then use your shortcuts from uh, the first part of this lesson of um, i, i squared, and, and uh, i cubed. Okay, all those n formulas. And we'll go back over those. Apply any limit tricks if you can by dividing by um, uh, the, the largest power that you have over your n's. Okay, so find the area of the region bounded by f of x equals x cubed, the x axes x equals 0 and x equals 1. Okay, so here's my procedure over here. So we're going to determine delta x and c sub i. Okay, so delta x, don't, don't forget, is uh, b minus a over n. So it's going to be uh, 1 minus 0 over n, which is 1 over n. c sub i is always um, uh, delta x. Here's delta x right here times i plus my starting point. My starting point is x equals 0, so it's like plus 0 right there. Okay, now that so we've done that right there. So now we're going to substitute this into the, the definition right there. Okay, so here's the definition right here. So it's a limit as n goes to infinity of f of um, f of c sub i. Well, c sub i is i over n times um, um, delta x, and delta x is 1 over n right there. Okay, so it's all substituted in there. Now we're going to substitute this into the function x cubed. So I'm going to plug this into x cubed right here. Okay, so I get... Um, uh, now this becomes x cubed, so here's my x cubed right here. Here's my delta x right here. All right, you guys with me? So I get uh, simplify, so let's go ahead and simplify this. And now I'm going to use my i tricks right here. I'm going to pull out the n to the fourth. I think that's what I did right there. Yeah, I did that. And then my i formula, okay, my i squared form, I'm sorry, my i cubed formula is, uh, remember this from uh, the prior lesson, so there it is right there. Plugged it in right there. Going to clean it up. And um, so I foiled that out right there, and then I distributed the n squared. So foil this out and distribute the n squared, and I get that. Okay, now I divide everything by the biggest power. The biggest power is n to the fourth. Okay, so I'm going to divide everything by n to the fourth, and I get that. And now I can apply my limit as n goes to infinity. That goes to zero, that goes to zero, and I'm left with one fourth, one over four. Okay? Piece of cake, huh? Let's try one more, you guys. Okay, so let's do the same with f of x equals 4 minus x squared. And we're starting at x equal 1 and uh, x equal 2 right there. Okay, so uh, notice the shift is 1 off, so it's going to be plus 1, my c sub i right there. So my c sub i is my delta x times i plus 1. Okay, delta x is b minus a over n, so 2 minus 1 is 1 over n. c sub i is delta x times i plus my starting point. Okay, so c sub i is uh, i, over, i over n plus 1. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and substitute it into the definition. There's the definition right there, f of c sub i uh, times delta x, and the limit as n approaches infinity from uh, i equal 1 to n on this. Okay, now we're going to substitute this into the function, so this is going to go right there for the x squared. So it's going to be 4 minus this quantity squared times that. Okay, so there's that right there. I'm going to go ahead and foil that out, and I get that mess right there, and I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to distribute uh, the negative through and combine like terms. Okay, so I distributed the negative through, and then I did 4 minus 1 is 3, and I pulled uh, the 1 over n out on each one, so 1 over n times 3, and then minus 2 over n squared. There's already 1n right there. Okay, times the i right there. And then here's my i squared for this one, and then it's uh, n and n squared on the bottom is 1 over n cubed. Okay, and then I'm going to apply my i formulas. There's my i formulas right there. So if I apply those, whoops, I didn't need to do that. And then when I apply those um, uh, and clean it up, I get that. And then uh, now let approach the uh, limit as n approaches infinity, and I end up getting... 5 thirds. Okay, it's fast, but um, uh, they're all the formulas are right there. So uh, you got to practice it, you guys. Practice gets you guys good at this stuff, you guys. And you guys know by now, homework is, is crucial for this class. Okay, if you're in my class, um, that's going to be your homework assignment.